It's the show that if Quentin Tarantino ever wanted to do a sequel for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he would more than likely skip over the part about this show. And again, it's the Mike Sasson Show on the River's Edge at www.riversedgepgh.com. You can listen to the best music, the best talk, and, of course, the Mike Sasson Show. My name's Mike. I do the hosting. And on the other end of the country is, of course, the talented, wonderful, first ballot Internet Radio Hall of Famer in the Millvale Studios in beautiful Millvale, Pennsylvania. It, of course, is Alex Clemens. On this week's show... The Quentin Tarantino film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood will get her take on it. Also, we'll get the inside scoop of how Alex tried to use her body to make money because she tries to break the law. Also, we're going to be doing uh, some wonderful things about uh, the worst movie possibly in the history of the world, Hobbs and Shaw. They they embarrassed themselves a little bit more this week with some news. Also, uh, Woodstock 50 years ago changed the world, right? Of course not the world's still the same also the person who invented gender reveal parties came out and gave everyone a message you're going to want to hear that message and finally they've done the definitive study to find out what are america's favorite sandwiches again my name's mike that's alex you can listen to the river's edge at www.riversedgepgh.com but i already mentioned that but what i didn't mention you can also listen to it on tune in radio you just go to the tune in radio app and you plug in the river's edge and you can listen all across the planet earth also if you want to listen to the mike sasson show uh classic episodes from the last three years all you have to do is go on to soundcloud itunes or Google Play. Alex, how are you doing today? You know, Mike, I'm doing just fantastic. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, just enjoying my first August here in Southern California. I I get a lot of people talking to me when I tell them I'm from Pennsylvania and, uh, you know, the people here in Southern California, the first thing out of their their mouths is typically, uh, you know, how you like the weather, how you how you dealing with the heat. And I always say the same thing. It's hot everywhere right now. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, there's there's no difference right now. I mean, like if like on my phone, I have the different weather. And so like in Pittsburgh, it's like 86. Well, in, you know, Los Angeles, it was like 91. That's not the difference. The difference comes in December when it's 80 and back in Pittsburgh when it's like 30. That's when I'm going to be like, oh, this is a little bit different when they're putting up Christmas lights and people are still surfing at the beach. That's a little bit different. Uh, but that's what I'm going through right now, a little bit of the warm weather. A um, couple things, Alex. Uh, I think I saw – when we when we when we eventually make the big time dough, yeah, you know the big time scratch. I always have a guy out. Like I, I found this nice convertible sports car Mercedes Benz that might be one of the first like major purchases that I make, only for about two hundred and fifty grand. So I think a steal at that point. Yes. Um, and I saw something that I feel could really work with your lifestyle eventually when you become the big time superstar that you are destined to be. What? What is it? Again, well, you know, obviously, when you become the big time superstar, you don't have time to open bottles to get drunk. No. So that's why I saw this and I took a picture of it. It's from the appliance company Decor and it's a a wine dispenser. I don't, are you, uh, do you, uh, how does it work? I guess. You put four bottles in there. So I still do have to open a bottle. Yeah, you have to, but only Someone once. else can do it for me, though. Yeah, exactly. At that point, someone else does it for you. And you put it in there, and you can choose to either have a little sample, to have half a glass, or a whole glass, and it'll keep the wine fresh as a daisy for 60 days. Wow. So you got 60 days to, to, to drink that bottle of wine. But I'm sitting there thinking with you, Alex, you're coming home from a long day of just, you know, of being the uh, entertainment titan that you were born to be. You don't have time to open up bottles. No, no. You, you don't have time to, like, figure out which bottle you're going to go with. You just walk over with the glass, figure it out, boom, there you go. You're drunk in no time. I think it's nice because you can have four different bottles in there. That mm-hmm. you could like 
you know, you can mix and match if you wanted to, you know, do a little like, you know, just put all of the wines into one glass and, you know, create your own little wine when you're feeling crazy, you know? I think that's my favorite part. Do you do that with, uh, like, I used to call, I think we used to call that, uh, some for some reason we called it suicide. Like, you would go to, like, Taco Bell, because Taco Bell was the originator of putting Ooh. the fountain drink on the outside. Like, it used to be that, like, at McDonald's, you got your soda, and then that was it. And if you asked for more, they would spit in your face. <laughs> but then Taco Bell decided, no, we're going to give the people unlimited soft drinks i remember that first came out i I was like maybe 12 years old and my brother was like nine and we freaked out because we're like oh my god we could just you mean we could just sit here all day and just drink soda all freaking day and the, the answer was yeah no one would care and I really think that that made Taco Bell, especially in the Northeast, because people were kind of scared of the whole taco concept at that point. And when they sat there and went, OK, don't be scared that it's just tasty uh, Mexican treats, but you can get all of the diet Mountain Dew you want. And so what we used to do sometimes because we were crazy kids is we would come up with a concoction where we would just do equal parts of all of the drink and mm-hmm. that's what we would drink yeah so my favorite places to do that are taco bell and panera um because they have like taco bell you can mix a lot of things with like baja blast and shit like that i think everything tastes good with it um and panera they have all these different kinds of, they have like all the different kind of teas and lemonades and all those different things so i like to mix all those and it makes me feel fancy you know how does it make you feel fancy? Is it make you? I think it always kind of more I think white fancy trashy. It, yeah, fancy in my mind, not in oh, okay. everyone else's minds. Oh, there you go. So uh, again, that's why I thought. I just thought that was a perfect gift for I'm you. Splurging. I saw that. And, uh, I'm doing it. I'm splurging. How much is it? There Do you, you know, go. Uh, like eight grand or something. You oh, know. that's Get, it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, here's the move then, Alex. Why don't you have a whole wall of that? You don't just have to buy one. Was there Alex? more? Okay, I didn't know if you were. G- it seemed like you were gonna say more there. You stopped on a point, and then I figured you would say more. Um, yes, yeah, I would like to have a whole wall, but I would, I would like to have it be all of the alcohols, not just wine. You know, have yeah, a little you tequila can do that. tap. You could, you, yeah, you could do. You could have Jack Daniels. You can have all sorts of stuff like that. Whiskeys. Yeah, yeah, I want that. As long as there's no white wine, I'd like everything else. Imagine you walk into your kitchen and there's a wall of those. I would be so happy. But I I mean, I would have to hire someone. I would hire someone specifically that their duty is just to come like once a week. Probably that's probably how fast I would go through all the alcohols. Um, Once a week, change out all the alcohols. Also clean. I can't imagine. You have to clean those lines or whatever. Yeah, of course. I'm definitely hiring someone for that. I'm not doing that myself because that seems like it kind of defeats the purpose. If you're doing all that yourself, like just get a bottle, you know? Yeah. Also, you said duty. Of course I did. Yeah. There you go. Uh, now, speaking of uh, other duty, um, last week I gave my take on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You saw it this week. Now, I think I gave you – I didn't try to give away the ending, but I did sit there and say that the movie was about Hollywood, not necessarily the Manson killings. Yes. Now, overall, what did you w- – w- give me your thoughts on the movie after seeing it. Overall, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I have a really hard time. Um, I fall asleep during a lot of things, especially if I see things at night. And I saw it at like, I don't, like nine o'clock, but still, it was, had been a long day for me. So I always fall asleep. I was wide awake throughout the whole thing and like interested throughout the whole thing. Um, and also, I don't think I've ever been more in love with Brad Pitt than this movie. Um, that was that was. That was my favorite part. I don't want it to be my favorite part because I actually really like the actual movie. But damn, there are so many. You're talking about when he was fixing the antenna on top of the roof? Just the whole movie. The whole movie, I was like, damn, Brad Pitt, like you have never looked better than this moment right now. Because I don't really find him attractive that often. And this was like, man, you've made it into a somewhat DILF-ism. And he's almost a G Dilf. He's in his mid fifties. Yeah. Does oh yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, does he have kids? <laughs> yeah. Um 
But yeah, I mean, he was just absolutely gorgeous. I couldn't stop staring at his arms. All of his outfits really showed off his his guns, you know. Um, but I, yeah. other than that, I did actually really enjoy the movie and kind of some of the symbolism behind it. And before I went into the movie, um, my friend I was talking to, and they were like, "Oh, you know, like Quentin Tarantino has a foot fetish, um, so there's a lot of feet in the movie." And I was like, I can't tell if you're being serious right now or you're not being serious. I can't tell at all. And then, like, halfway through the movie where uh, Sharon Tate's sitting in the movie theater and she puts her feet up, I was like, oh, uh-huh. wait, it's there are there are a ton of feet in this movie and gross, like, dirty feet, too, uh, which I don't really like that. But Yeah, he it is, like, kind of known that he does have, like, a little bit of a foot fetish. So, But he's the director of the movie. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Um, I will say this. Yeah, this this they made Brad Pitt into a certified badass in this movie. Yeah, I um, I I was prepared for the violence, but also not at the same time. Like I still found myself like, do I just close my eyes so I can stop watching this or do I like just continue watching it? It seems like it's going to be over soon. And then it wasn't over soon. And I was like, oh, oh, my God, it was it was a lot for sure. Um, I mean, it wasn't I it wasn't terrible. I wasn't like completely terribly grossed out, but I also was like, I don't know when to stop watching. That would make me feel okay. So give the uh, the, the 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 people at home if they haven't seen the movie, give them a reason why, in your opinion, they should see the movie. Um, I my main thing uh, that I liked about the movie and why other people should see it, um, like just being like in that time period like that 1960s like culture and everything like that it's such a nostalgic movie for all of that like even just seeing like the different places in hollywood and like what they like would have looked like that time and like the dress and everything like i don't really know anyone who is like oh i hate 1960s culture like i've never met anyone like that and probably just punch them in the face and not be friends with them um, but it's like very nostalgic of that time and kind of makes you like gets you into it, especially if you obviously weren't around during that time. Um, I think that was the coolest part of it. Well, one of the things which is cool now, especially living in Los Angeles and, 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 and now my sister and brother actually live literally in that neighborhood where they were, they filmed that movie and yeah. you see him going off on, you know, you know, onto the highway and you're like, Oh, that's literally 400 yards away from where sister lives and stuff like that. Yeah. As much as the, the area has changed, it really hasn't. Yeah. Now, granted they have more different signs and, you know, I mean, obviously more coffee shops and all kind of stuff, but that vibe is still pretty prevalent and there is still kind of this kind of the the standard you know people wearing you know blue jeans and walking around you know just kind of enjoying the sunshine and the hollywood vibe and all that other kind of stuff so it's it's it definitely is there but again it's not as innocent it's more grimy it's more kind of dare i say if you saw the dirt kind of that more motif as opposed to like the sunny hey isn't this the greatest place in the world type vibe and i think that's why again the charles manson murders really ended that kind of that innocence and of the hey we live in the 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 most fun place in the world kind of deal yeah yeah i definitely think so but overall i thought i i very much enjoyed the movie i would see it again and then probably just not watch the end (laughs) There you go. Um, now, speaking of Once Upon a Time, uh, very few things now surprise me about you anymore because, again, I've known you for three years. We <laughs> talk pretty much for like an hour and a half or so every week for the You've last three years. You've known me for more than three years. Well, for now, I think what we're uh, about a year before we started the show. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Seems, but but seems even like then, million. you were just kind of just like a girl at open mics. I mean, I didn't really, like, get down to, like, know you, know you type deal. Yeah. But um, so out of the blue this week, it, you, you did something on your Instagram where I guess it was, like, nine years ago. Yeah. Where uh, you participated in a bikini contest. Yeah. So I was 17. Um yeah, that was the other thing with the math. I was trying to figure out the math. So you had just turned 17. I had, yeah, I just turned 17 the month beforehand. Um, also, first note, um, I've never told my parents about this. Um, okay. And they didn't see it on my Instagram. So here you this go. This is the introduction here to the Here you go, mom. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I was 17. Um, and uh, do you remember Club Zoo? Um, I highly yes. doubt you went there. Or did I you? never went there. Okay. I knew of it. Yeah, you would have been too old, I think, but by the time it was like a big thing. Um, well, even like there were cert- there were like modern equivalents and stuff like that, and I didn't yeah. even go when I was 17 into those type of places because it just I always felt that we're if you're gonna go to a bar, go to a bar kind of deal. Right, but for people who don't know, Club Zoo was in the Strip District in Pittsburgh, um, and it was like an under 21 club. Um, Mm -hmm. they also had like concerts and stuff there, which I'm assuming were also over 21. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so like in high school, this was like sometimes a thing to do. This was like, you know, you're kind of being a badass, um, and going to club zoo and like not telling your parents and stuff like that. Um, cause definitely not a place I would want my kids to go for sure. Um, cause it's 21 and under. How old did you have to be to get in? Like 16, right? I, yeah, I'm assuming 16. So uh, you have everyone there from 16 to, like, 21. Um, yeah. And which is fucking weird. Because it just imagine you being 16. Like, I remember when I went, like, dancing with this guy who was 20 um, or, like, 21, something like that. And I was like, why are you even here, first of all? Like, why is this the place that you're going to? Uh, but I remember dancing with him, and I was like, this is weird. Like, you're definitely too – like, I shouldn't be talking to you. I'm definitely too young for this. So, yeah, you were like a – like, a so, like well, you were going into what? You're like your junior year of high school? Uh, I would have been going into my senior year. Okay, but you were go, like going to this place when you were like a sophomore in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in between those years, I was definitely going there. Um, I didn't go there often. I probably have been there maybe three times in my life, um, and this was one of those times. Um, so when I first started driving when I was 16, I got a lot of uh, tickets uh, for like not stopping at a stop sign, for speeding, like multiple driving tickets. Um, because I was a terrible driver. Um, and so I had just gotten a speeding ticket. It was like $105, something like that was the fine. Um, I can't remember if I told my parents about the speeding ticket or not, but I know I had to pay it. So, uh, I had to come up with that money when I wasn't working. Um, so I saw Club Zoo advertise for this bikini contest and the prize was $100. And I was like, fuck yeah. Like I can just easily win this money, go pay my parking ticket. My parents will have no idea. This is, you know, all works out perfectly. Um, so I bought this gold bikini. Um, I rhymed. Yeah, it was a question I had. Where did you get the gold oh, bikini? I have no idea. Probably some shit store. Um, it looks very stripper-esque in my mind. Um, it's like this shiny gold bikini, and I, I rhinestoned it so that it was even oh. more in your face and even more trashy looking. Um, so you look like you look like you were like in a Vegas show at this point. A little bit, but I had a cute little flower in my hair to make me look a little bit innocent. Um, oh, okay, there you go. So I had this on. I remember I even wore I wore a bra under my bathing suit to make my boobs look bigger. Um, because, you know, at that point I wasn't, you know, fully, uh, you know, Alex then. Um, so I wore a bra under it to make my boobs look bigger. And I just wore this bikini top and some, these tiny ass little shorts. I remember those shorts very well. Um, and we were like dancing and stuff. And then the bikini contest came around and, um, I don't completely remember all they had us do, but I do remember the one part is they had us dance on the bar so you have, like, a bunch of 16, 17-year-olds, like, dancing on a bar in, bi- in bikinis, um, which, one, doesn't seem like a good thing and doesn't, like I said, yeah, doesn't seem like... this really seems like... I, this really seems one of those things of, like, I don't understand how this... Because it is completely legal. Right. But it's, like, one of those things of why I don't understand. So let me ask you a question. During the contest, were you still wearing the Daisy Dukes, or did you take them off and now wearing the bikini bottoms? No, no, no. I was just wearing like, the Daisy Dukes. They were short enough to be bikini bottoms, so um, okay. I, ke- I kept those on. But, yeah, you think about it, you're like, the person who works at Club Zoo who put this together, you know, they were like, this is going to be a good idea. Um, but we had the person who owns club zoo, the person who owns club zoo is probably in their fifties and pays his rent, pays his car bill by putting 16 or 17 year old girls in bikinis on top of bars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is why, (laughs) 
This is why Club Zoo does not exist anymore. It's closed yes, down. Yes, but the equivalents still do. Yeah, yeah. I don't, just don't know about as bad as Club Zoo, but <laughs> I um, I was not good. I don't know if I am now, but I wasn't good at dancing on bars when I was 17, and I was, like, super nervous and awkward about the whole thing. Um, and there was these other girls, like, getting down and I was like I do not feel comfortable being on this bar right now and I felt so awkward and um, I didn't win obviously um, or it would have been a much I don't, I don't know happier day for me but I guess I had fun I don't know I can't imagine if like me thinking about myself right now be, being like my age and like going somewhere wearing just a bikini there's a bunch of creepy ass dudes around um, not drinking because I was 17 and then going and dancing on a bar like that sounds miserable to me. So I can't imagine I enjoyed it then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things to where it's just like, I don't know. It's, it's especially I've now, and I mentioned this on previous shows, I've now met a few people in the adult film industry here <laughs> and yeah. it really is one of those things to where a you know i assume a couple of their stories had to start with i owed some money or i needed some money <laughs> and i felt that this was a good idea kind of deal i can only imagine like the i'm i'm sure that there was like recruiters like porn recruiters at club zoo they were like hey have you <laughs> turned 18 yet like you would be great like that's how they recruit people is they have bikini contests to see who's comfortable doing that stuff, and then they recruit you to be in porn. Well, I do know that that's how they do it. Like, they, I guess their place would be to go to the strip club. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I I bet you strip clubs probably recruit places like this to get dancers for the strip club. Oh God, yeah. I just I like I said I've never told my parents this story, um, and I can't remember. I I highly doubt I told them I was going to Club Zoo. Or if I told them that I was going to Club Zoo, they did not understand what it was. <laughs> uh, but somehow I got there, and somehow I entered in this bikini contest and didn't win the money. So I guess I had to come up with that hundred dollars for my parking or pay. Oh my God, speeding ticket some other way. I don't know how. So here is my story of bikini contest. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> I, I did not participate in one. I had never purchased a gold bikini, but this is what I did. And this is why when I thought of you in this and the fact that you didn't win means that you really sh you obviously it would have been really weird for me at the time to be your friend because I'd have been like in my late like early 30s at the time. Yeah, weird. Yeah, but so in college, I was at this bar and it was a typical, you know, college bar. Everybody's, you know, you know, you know, nuts to butts as, as you will. And all of a sudden I see them setting up on like the stage, like a big Budweiser banner and all this other kind of stuff. Now my father for years was, um, a sales manager for the local Budweiser distributor in Pittsburgh. That's why we first moved to Pittsburgh. And so I went up to the guy and I said, Hey, do you guys work for Budweiser? And they're like, yeah, we work for Budweiser. And I'm like, Oh, my dad was a sales manager in Pittsburgh for Budweiser. What are you guys doing today? He goes, Oh, we're going to hold a bikini contest. And we're all like, yeah, this is awesome. You know, bikini contest, all this kind of stuff. And then my buddy who was a football player uh, named Bill uh, shows up and he go, I go up to him. I go, dude, we're going to be in a bikini con. There, there's a bikini contest. This is going to be rad. He goes, yeah, I know I'm in it. <laughs> oh, damn. And I'm like, dude, what's up? He goes, the freaking prize is 500 bucks. And you know, Mike, I, you know, if I, I don't care if I don't win it. I mean, like, here's the thing. There's going to be a, like four or five, like, you know, decent looking chicks. I'm going to be a giant fat guy. Half the people in this bar are like football players. I think I have a chance to win. And I go, dude, you're <laughs> going to win. So I sat there and again, they had all these girls and they gave them like Budweiser bikinis and they all got up there and they all stand. And I am, I'll be honest with you. There's very few moments in my life that I'm embarrassed at my, my, uh, my actions. This was one of them. Cause I so wanted my buddy to win the $500. Cause again, when you're in college, especially in 1998, $500 might've been 
five thousand yeah, dollars. Like you're yeah. sitting there going, "This is this this guy's buying drinks for the rest of the semester." So I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, "She sucks!" And I'm getting the whole crowd against them and everything like that. And then as soon as Bill gets up there, I'm like the biggest hype man. I'm like, Bill. Bill's the best and all everyone's like yeah and all the teammates are getting on there and all the girls are all like Woo. and again he's an offensive lineman he's my buddy so like he does have boobs and so he's like big hairy fat guy and he's doing like the whole moves and he's he's like twerking and all that other kind of stuff and everybody's going nuts and the guy's sitting there and there's these four girls over there could you imagine if you'd have done this and you'd have lost to a 300 pound fat guy I would be so upset because they did that they did that to us too kind of where like like when we were dancing on the bar, they'd like point to one of us and everyone would make noise, you know? And like how terrible is that on your self esteem? That like if you were a seventeen year old standing on a bar in a bikini and everyone had to cheer for you and like no one cheered for you, you know? So I can only imagine what those girls felt like. Yeah. I'm not happy with my my I am happy that I'm a good teammate. Because he won that $500, and he did share a little with me. He bought me some pizzas and some beer, so that was <laughs> that was quality on Bill's part. But uh, you see, the key was, I think it's, it's an awful lot like winning a comedy contest. You needed to stack the room with your friends. Yeah, I know, and I only had one person there with me. Yeah, that was my fault. I also really didn't have friends, so uh, <laughs> that's probably why I was there in the first place. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, now you have all of the internet radio friends that you could possibly ask for, Alex. You know, but when I did post this on my Instagram the other day, that I had multiple people reply back to me and they were like, oh, my God, I can't believe that you didn't win. Like, I would have like I, I would have voted for you. And I was like, yeah, well, you didn't see 17 year old me dancing up on a bar. You probably would <laughs> change your mind afterwards. Why do you think they would? I mean, I'm being honest. When I saw that picture, that's an attractive 17 year old girl. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> um, well, I'm being honest. It's a, that you'd figure the, a, a, a girl that looks like that, you know, there you go. Well, there's also not it, really quality people, you know, at Club Zoo. So I think that was the bad thing. These people wouldn't have, the people that commented on my Instagram post would not have been there at Club Zoo to have voted for me in the first place. So you think that the person who won it was ultimately just the kind of sleazy scumbag that they wanted to see? Yep, exactly. The guy, yeah, the, the one that the contest was made for, not cute little innocent Alex. Yeah, who just wanted to be, you know, who just wanted a hundred dollars just to make sure that she didn't have to. And by the way, you'd still be five dollars short. So. Yeah, well, I think I could have come up with that. <laughs> Without dancing on top of bars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All righty, there it goes. That's what you learn something every single week on the Mike Sasson Show. Coming up next, bar thoughts and experience with Alex. Alex already told you about her experience with, with uh, bikini with gold bikinis. Which I don't. Do you still own the gold bikini, or did you burn it immediately afterwards? <laughs> I don't own it, but I did keep it for a little too long. <laughs> As a lesson of just like <laughs> slow down. Yeah. Anyways, it's the Mike Sasson Show on the River's Edge. We'll be right back. Mike Sasson Show on the River's Edge at www.riversedgepgh.com where you get the best local talk, you get the best local music. After us, again, is Grown Dad Business with Aaron Kleiber. But right now, you know her, you love her. She's going to get an automatic dispenser of wine when she gets famous, not if, when. It, of course, is Alex's Bar Thoughts and Experiences with Alex. Alex, play the theme song. Maybe y'all can relate. My style's dope anyway that just slice it. It's a fresh cut hole. Like beautiful absolutely beautiful dancing there mike i it, you would have Thank loved you. mine as well i got up on the table here uh tried to reenact my bikini contest dance uh yeah yeah sorry you couldn't see it 
Yeah, I'll, I'll see. That's one thing that, just full disclosure for anybody watching right now, I can't see Alex. <laughs> I see just a picture of me. I find out what Alex looks like the same time you guys do tomorrow. So <laughs> I forget. I forget all the time, too, that you can't actually see me. It's very freeing on my end. Just so I know you've gotten very relaxed. A lot of the times you have like your feet up and you're picking your teeth and you're just because you're just basically in the room by yourself at this point. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, um, here's some bar thoughts for you. I went to a wedding this weekend. There you go. I wedding was, season for Alex. Yeah. You know, well, I'm going. It was one. I got invited. I was a plus one to a wedding um, because I'm a great person and people love me and I invite myself to weddings. Um <laughs> So I have Alex Clements' tips for a good wedding. Um, okay, a couple things that I noticed. So number one, have a good and simple venue, somewhere that isn't too nice that you don't feel comfortable getting drunk and maybe trashing the place. Not completely uh -huh. trashing, but, you know, like, you need to feel comfortable, like, being yourself there. You know, you don't want some bougie place that you're like, oh, I have to be so fancy and, like, be concerned about that the whole time, you know? But it has to be nice enough for photos, like really good photos. See that, like right as as of right now, here are the venues that my family has been to. My first was my brother Tim. We were out in Somerset, and there was like this like venue that in like out in the country, which was fine except for the fact that we had the wedding in July and it was a little hot. But the fact of the matter is, once it got nighttime, we were ba if we felt like we were in our own place. We could we could have burned the place down, so that was good. Yeah. Um, most of my sisters have been in like hotel ballrooms. Yeah. Which are fine. Uh, again, you're near rooms. You kind of get there. It, it's it, you, you get your own thing, but then like you leave the. Uh, the initial ballroom and now like there's other parties going on. So I kind of like the aspect of being out in the woods. Cause you're kind of like on your own kind of deal. Yeah. Um, my sister out in New Jersey and it's like Jersey weddings are famous for being like over the top with food and pictures and all that kind of stuff. Definitely hers was the most insane in terms of food. And then my sister, Mary, we, she went Lamont. So we had the best view of Pittsburgh. So you talk about pictures. The pictures were spectacular. And then pretty much we were kind of with ourselves, but then we were close to the city. So when we we went to like Station Square afterwards, which was pretty cool. So the answer I would say that I would give you is so far, I would say the barn was the most uncomfortable, but the most like we could do what we wanted to do. The ballrooms are kind of like, that's just like a belt high fastball. You never go wrong with that. Yeah. Um, Lamont was like the most like, over, like, oh, my gosh, look at this view type deal. Yeah, so the one I went to, it was kind of a good mix of both because they had, like, a, a little, like, hall where the uh, ceremony was and stuff like that. But then they had this, like, big, like, one of those giant white tents that has, like, the little windows on the side and stuff. Um, but they, like, opened up half of it. So half of it was, like, you could go outside. And there was, like, it was on this beautiful hill. You could see everything. And there was a pond and a cute little gazebo and stuff. So it was, like, outside and, like... It was just very, like, simple and relaxed, which I enjoy. Number there two, um, give people plus ones uh, to your wedding. If you have to cut costs somewhere else, do that because I, I don't enjoy when people, like, will invite you. And especially if it's a wedding where you don't really know a ton of people going. Like, I think you should give people the option to bring a plus one. And if they don't want to, if they're just like, hey, I want to go see if there's any kind of, you know, if I can score at all with any of the hot bridesmaids, give them that option, but also give them the option to bring someone so that they feel more comfortable because I don't like that. That's not that I don't like that at all, that people don't won't give plus one sometimes. Here are my places to cut. First and foremost, I don't like the whole hand me like the prime rib on the thing. I like buffet. Yeah, I want to yeah. get what I want. I you know, and if it's just chicken fingers and you know mashed potato, whatever, fine. I don't care. I'll eat it. The whole point of the thing is the the booze later. Yeah. Uh, secondly, I would sit there and say uh, alcohol, alcohol alcohol yep. bar go you know no you know if free bar ca no cash anything like anybody put any wedding that has a cash bar i, I immediately you know i have never met you okay i don't know who you are 
So again, I would say you got to make sure that you're, you got the free alcohol and everything like that. Um, and then the other thing is you got to have the after party set up pretty good, whether you're going back to the rooms, whether you're going to another bar, what, what, whatever. Like, I like that idea of the pond that gives you like more of like a more outdoorsy thing. So there's a lot of cool things with the idea you're looking at there. Yeah. And I like, I, I, I agree with you. I think that there's like some things that you can like cut back costs on, you know, um, like, I don't know, don't put as many fucking flowers around your wedding or um, don't get as nice of a venue if you can't fit all of the people that you want to come there. Um, and also have easy food. Like you said, like I really like I, I want it to be like buffet style. We had so this wedding that I went to, um, I went to the rehearsal dinner on Friday and they just had pizza and wings and hot dogs. And it was like amazing. Like they, yeah. it was very good pizza. And then Saturday, I like wasn't really impressed with the food. I was like, you should have just had the pizza and wings for your wedding because it would have been cheaper. And I think people would have enjoyed it more. Everyone's drinking. They don't care what they eat, you know? And yeah, exactly. All it is is like, again, it's. A wedding is just a massive party that you throw for yourself, which is pretty cool. Um, and when, if you're talking about a party, have you ever been to a party and the food was like the main attraction? No. no it's just like if they got, you know, again, you get some, uh, you know, some, uh, some pizza, the wings, you know, you know, some starchy, you know, French fries, mashed potatoes type deal, a thing, a salad to make it that people think that you're not a complete fat pig, you know, and then go right to the booze. That's the key there and okay so these are my two things um that i think are like you should splurge your money on when it comes to a wedding like you said um alcohol give people a cash bar and give them like a couple of decent options um and a good dj i think that as like the weddings that i've been to that i'm like oh my god that was the best wedding i've ever been to blah blah, blah. it's always that like there was a good dj that like hyped everyone up and like played songs that covered you know the whole like everyone that was there and everyone was like up and dancing like you couldn't not dance even if you weren't a big dancer you're like oh my god I, like this is so much fun i have to go out and dance like those are my favorite types of weddings and i didn't even i couldn't tell you another thing about those weddings that i really enjoyed like wait a minute you said no i mean i'm talking free booze the booze flows no cash bar i don't want people paying no that's what i said yeah spend your money on alcohol spend like okay. the people putting on the wedding spend all of your money on alcohol so that people can have an open bar well let me ask you a question have you ever been to a, uh, uh, a wedding with a live band i haven't actually it's it see I, I that's a debate in my mind is if uh you know you talk about obviously the dj it, uh, the dj if that guy is good can make or break your wedding um but some people have talked about that the live band just re i think uh you know i'm i'm trying to remember through my 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 the weddings i've been to i think i've been to one with a live band if that person knows their shit then you almost have every musical genre because that person can can kind of you know, there's something about a live music type deal. Yeah, I definitely think that's a lot of fun, but you literally have to find, like, the exact right person. But sometimes, also, you just want to hear, like, the songs you want to hear, and you want to hear them being done by the people that did them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I think, like, with a live band, you really got to pick, like, the perfect one. Or even, like, I've been to, like... I think some weddings where they have like a live band for a certain amount of time and then a DJ for the rest of the time, great, because you get the best of both worlds, you know? Just like that Van Halen song. Yeah, or the Hannah Montana song. <laughs> Good comparisons. Yeah, there you go. All right, so this run them down. First and foremost, make sure your venue uh not too fancy make sure it's big enough for everyone to bring a plus one alcohol plenty of it food as long as it's good and tasty it doesn't have to be the most fancy thing in the world yeah and dj make sure the dj knows how to rock it and also i think have a plan for after the wedding so you can drink more and possibly score some hot chicks i agree and my last tip is get someone else to clean up your wedding
because I, the wedding that I was at, they were there on Sunday cleaning up and like packing up stuff. I never want to do that. Get someone else to clean up your wedding. It's your special day. Spend money on what, it. Who, 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 like the bride and groom the next day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were like cleaning up stuff. They took people's suits back to the store. Like, I was like, no, nope. The day after my no. wedding, like, I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, only thing that I've ever, uh, um, next day, breakfast. Then plane to someplace super cool where I can uh, wear the rock the speedo and uh, we can uh, screw like rabbits. That's basically what the point is. What a great image you put in all of our heads, Mike. That's what this show's all about. Just wonderful images. Boom, like that one. I showed you the gunnage. Anyways, oh God. Uh, Alex, thank you very much. Hey, you're welcome, Mike. Alrighty, now to news and notes from the world of entertainment, gossip, and all bunch of stuff. Alex, play the theme song. Get stars now. now, Alex, a couple of months ago, we talked about Woodstock 50. They were going to have a 50th anniversary concert. They were going to have these amazing bands. It was going to be somewhere in upstate New York. It was going to be an incredible event. But I don't know if you picked up on this. Uh, the entire thing was canceled because yep. uh, a giant music festival like that is really hard to put on. And they just said, fuck it. Yeah, well, I heard that they were afraid that they couldn't live up to the hype of Woodstock. Well, that's the point I got to make. PBS is doing a documentary because, again, this is the 50th anniversary of Woodstock in which they're doing it for three nights because obviously, you know, PBS has all the time in the world, I guess. Three nights to talk about Woodstock, the, the, the weekend that defined a generation. Oh. And then somebody wrote after seeing it how much of full of total horse shit it was and wrote about how Woodstock really was. So these are some of the things that people don't emphasize with Woodstock. Number one, the reason why it was a free concert is because the promoters were too cheap and too stupid to fence off the area, so they couldn't stop them, so they basically made it a free concert, even though a good percentage of the people actually did buy, buy tickets, which if I bought tickets and it suddenly became a free concert, I would be pissed. Rage, yeah. Uh, second thing is uh, they had no idea how to put together a music festival. A few weeks before the event, they literally went to Madison Square Garden while they were like doing like a Knicks game or a rock concert or something like that. And they sat outside and timed how long it took people to go to the bathroom. You talk about like not knowing what the hell is going on. And so they did the math and they figured out for as many people as they expected to be at Woodstock, they would have to buy something in the neighborhood of like 25,000 porta potties. Holy shit. They didn't do any of that, which is why eventually it was a giant cesspool of piss and shit because they just said, fuck it, we don't have the money, just have people show up. Um, a number three is the fact that um, if it wasn't for the old people in the neighboring towns, it would have become a massive disaster. So they talk about like, oh, this is when people came together. What happened was is legitimately the New York um, – National Guard went to the to the small town next door and said, hey, there's like a million kids over there. There's not enough water. There's not enough food. There's not enough blankets. So the little town who was filled with basically quaint old people had a collection and put together a thing where they gave them blankets and food and water and all this kind of stuff. And it got airdropped in by the national guard. So there you are. They're all like these anti-war hippies and the national guard came and basically saved their ass. Um, and also the other thing that people like for the last like 15 minutes of the documentary, they were talking about, oh, it was a transformative moment. And blah, blah, blah. Nothing changed. Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin died within a year. Uh, the war still raged for another like three, four years. Richard Nixon was the next president that was elected. Um, and if you haven't noticed, racism is pretty much still here. So overall, it was just basically a concert. You got laid or you didn't. That was pretty much all it was. Yeah, and you peed or pooped in the field or on other people. 
Pretty much. Anyways, moving on to other shitty things. Um, Hobbs and Shaw, the movie we've been making fun of for a couple months because that's the uh, Jason Statham um, uh, rock movie. That's the spinoff of The Fast and the Furious, which, again, I am proud to say I have never watched a moment of a Fast and Furious movie. Me neither. Look at us. That's why we, that's why we get along, Alex. Anyways, so... Um, it made $60 million this weekend, which was actually on the low end, yeah. but it made $120 million overseas, and it didn't even open in China and South Korea. And they pretty much said in the article today about the box office that, yeah, these numbers indicate that this movie's not going to be that big in America, and if they're going to make their money back, it's going to be overseas, which proves, again, anything with The Rock in it, you don't. if you speak English, you don't want to watch it. It's this is, you know, if, if, unless English is like a faint language to you, these movies are completely stupid. Case in point. Apparently in the movie, Jason Statham has a sister in the movie. In reality, the actor and actress, uh, Jason Statham and this actress, are 21 years difference in terms of age. He's like in his mid fifties and she's like in her like early, late, you know, early thirties, late twenties in the movie though, there are flashbacks in which they are essentially like uh, in this, they're about the same age. Right. Which leads to the question of how dumb do you think people are? Yeah. Well, I was, I was listening to uh, some stupid like morning radio show this morning um, uh -huh. And that's one of the things that they talked about, how people were kind of like outraged about that fact and about how literally it, it seems like you're just kind of making fun of the people who watch the movies and like, this is how stupid you are that you wouldn't really like, this wouldn't be a question in your mind is totally, you know, totally real. Well, I think that's the arrogance of these guys, these J the Jason Stathams of the world, that they sit there and they go, oh, you can tell them I'm 28 years old. No one would stay. And you're like, no, dude, no one thinks you're 28. They no. think you're a really in shape 50 something year old, but no one's sitting there going, if I told you Jason Statham was like 30 years old, would you believe me? No, not at all. Exactly. Yeah. He's, he's clearly old. Again, same thing with Brad Pitt. You can be a really good looking mid fifties dude, but no one's going to believe that like, you know, I actually liked it in in, uh, in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood when he picks up the underage girl. The girl pro propositions her him or for sex, and he goes, "How old are you?" Like, yeah. And then he had the great line. He goes, "I'm old enough to fuck you, but you're too old to fuck me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you know, I think that should be honestly like on a like on a bar. You know, <laughs> just because the girl's old enough to fuck you doesn't mean you're young enough to fuck her. Um, then the other thing that I thought was interesting was there was a big article in the Wall Street Journal how this is how narcissistic these guys are. Jason Statham, The Rock, and Vin Diesel in previous Fast and Furious movies actually had it put into their contracts that they could not lose fights. They always had to win them? They couldn't lose them. I want that to be like, in my contract. That you could never lose a fight? Yes. I want it to be in my contract for the show that every time we have an argument, I'm right. <laughs> no, it's you can't lose. Not that you, 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 can't, you have to win every time. It's just you can't lose. Okay. Well, I still want that to be in my contract for the show. I think pretty much over three years, you haven't. I haven't done that. I haven't been like, you're completely wrong. It's just like we eventually just go, okay, let's move on. Yeah, yeah. But I want it to be from this point forward that that will never happen. I need a guarantee. I'm writing up a contract now. Okay. You send me a contract that says, and then I'll have some demands too. Like uh, you have to laugh at at least 40% of my jokes. Do you want to keep me as a producer? 30% of my jokes. <laughs> there you go. That was um, the 30%. That but, one laugh right there. 
Yeah. All right. That was, yeah, I, I'll count that. Anyway, so one of the other things that they found that Vin Diesel was so into this that he actually hired his sister to count and put a numeric value on every punch that was thrown on, at Vin Diesel's character. So, like, if he got punched in the head, that was, like, five points. If he got punched in the stomach, that's, like, two points. And it had to be equal at the end of the day. So if they sat there and went, hey, wait a minute, in this fight, Jason Statham is up, like, 75 to Vin Diesel's 55 Vin needs to throw some haymakers to the face in order to equal it I um want to be the rock's sister because that seems like okay. a pretty sweet gig no Vin Diesel's sister or you want to be the oh, rock's sorry. instead sorry Vin Diesel's sister I want to be yeah. his sister because I want that I want that job to to do that to count the punches or anything in a fight that I think fun. that would be a horrible job because A you have to admit you're Vin Diesel's sister um and two, you have to watch them making the Fast and the Furious. That can't be fun. Yeah, but I'm, um, I feel like it's maybe better than, you know, a lot of other jobs that you could have. I would rather dance on top of uh, bars in a gold bikini, personally. Uh, I'd be okay with it. You don't actually have to uh, watch the movie in the end, you know, just the making of it. I'm sure there's some I other, like, be, hot dudes. That'd be horrible. That'd be so horrible. I'm, I'm sure there's some attractive, like, extras that you could hit on and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. I'm all for it. And I'm just sitting there, you know, enjoying the free food on set and just counting punches. I will say this. Movie food is spectacular. When I was on, I will bring it back to Mindhunter, the food was out of this world. Yeah. Yeah, it's geez. amazing Hollywood stars aren't insanely fat after that. Um, second story, everyone now has to have gender reveal parties. Everyone's got to have gender things and all this other kind of stuff where you shoot, you know, sparks if it's blue and you, you drive a car off a cliff and it blows up and the flames are pink and all this other kind of shit. Well, they interviewed... The woman who is who people feel invented the whole gender reveal party concept. It's a blogger out of here in Los Angeles named Jenna Curvazidis, um, and she wrote an impassioned blog post saying, "Stop with the whole gender reveal bullshit." So how uh, how did she start all of this? Did she have She one? claims, like, I, do you see that picture of that cake? Yeah. That was initially the first gender reveal cake in which essentially she claims as a fun thing, she had the doctor send, like, the thing to, like, her sister, and she put pink icing in the thing, and when they cut open the cake and served the first slice, that's how she found out that she was having a girl. Yeah. And then she did the blog and people thought that was cute. And so people did it. And then it got on YouTube and blah, 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 blah. And that's how the whole bullshit started. Okay. And, and she's she saying, it. stop with it. Because she says, she basically says that making such a big deal out of gender is harmful for the kids. It's like, let the kids be whoever they want to be. You don't have to assign, you know, characteristics of blue or pink even when they're not even around yet and we just need to stop the whole nonsense i just want to stop the whole nonsense because i just think that it's uh, silly and dumb well i i was actually just talking about this the other day um and one of my friends went to a gender reveal party i'm pretty sure it was their second kid um mm -hmm. and they went to a gender reveal party and they had already had like i i want to say they already had a boy and they really really wanted the next kid to be a girl because they already had a boy. And so they had this gender reveal party and it ended up being a boy, not a girl. And they were super disappointed. And so like, imagine going to one of those parties and the people like you like break open a balloon and everyone's just kind of like, Oh, you know, like I'm not even excited about it. That's what I don't get. Cause like you have to be excited either way, you know, cause that's, you're going to have a shitty party if you're not excited either way. Um, and so that's the point. The, the excitement should be, hey, I'm having a kid. Exactly. Isn't this amazing? Also, I think it's just too many parties. It's too fucking much. They already have a baby shower. You know, I already have to give you gifts and shit for that. And then you want me to also come around for like a, a gender reveal party? No. That's just you're just asking for too much and too much time like of people's time. Just do it on your own. 
if you really want to have like a cute little gender reveal, do it on fucking Facebook Live and invite all your family, something like that, and show them that way. You know, it's not a bad thing to like show everyone like what you're having, you know, but just just don't waste people's time. That's my thing. Which, yeah, yeah, that's it. I think that I think if there's one of the major tenets of this show is, you know what? Stop wasting people's time because mm-hmm. that's me and Alex's job. Anyways, <laughs> um, we on the show. Yeah. Especially you, Alex. You are very pro dick pic. Whoop, whoop. I'm sure my parents are good to ha- happy to hear that one too. Pro dick pic. Right. Well, I think we've over the last three years. I think we've made that perfectly clear <laughs> that you, you're you're pro dick pic. Yeah, so I think, I think they've so. they've they've already accepted that one. Well, <laughs> proving again that universities have too much damn money. Dr. Corey Peterson at a university in Canada interviewed 1,300 men and asked them, "Why do you send dick pics?" Yes. Why can't I do this study? I think you can. I really do think there's a website where we can figure this shit out. <laughs> there's just like a website. It's like enter your stupid study here and you'll see if you get funding for it. Yeah. It like the little, little, little dial comes up and then all of a sudden it says you received $250,000. Congratulations. Go at you it. can find <laughs> out why dogs sniff their own butts. Okay. So he interviewed all these people. All right, so here are the the reasons why the men say that they send dick pics. The number one reason is because they want the woman to reciprocate and show some nudity of their own. Hell yeah. So it's all about the transitional, like, hey, I'm showing you this, you show me that, there you go, boom, 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 all that kind of good stuff. Um, The second one is, and this is the, 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 uh, the other more popular one, according to the men... This is just how, in 2019, you show someone that you're interested in them. <laughs> it's a, it's just this is the, this is how you flirt type deal. Oh God, that sounds terrible. That. All right. So the response right now, uh, uh, you would say of the first one, that makes sense. A guy sends you a picture of a schlonger. He wants some pictures of uh, of you in your nudity. You get it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but you should really do it the other way. Like, I mean, like, it should be, I I don't know. I feel like typically women are going to be more comfortable sending you pictures first and then, like, having you send something. But, I mean, that makes sense in my mind, yes. And then the second part is it's just, hey, this is 2019. This is just how you flirt. I mean, it is. But, it, yeah, I mean, that's very true. It just kind of sounds bad for our generation, I guess. That you just can't even, like, smile and wink and buy someone a malt. You have to basically show your genitals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't just be, like, a, a you know, real gentleman. Uh, Got to send your genitals uh, to make sure that they know that you're flirting with them, you know? Well, it's, it, it, it even, like, in real life now, especially now everybody has phones, um, there was a person that I know out here in Los Angeles who works with a bunch of like models at the bar ba- at like the restaurant that they work at. And um, she says point blank that if she likes a guy, she'll legitimately just walk up to him uh, and have a picture of her boobs on the phone and just be like, here, what do you think? These are yours if you want them. Uh, uh, I don't like that. I would never do that. You're right in front of the person. That's kind of the whole thing, you know? The, your boobs are right there. Just maybe, why would you just flash the person? I don't know. I mean, go in a secret area. Don't do it in the middle of the restaurant. But also, uh-huh. you're, like, right in front of the person. That's, like, you can show them your personality. Also, they could kind of see what you're working with, you know? It's not a huge surprise. Um, yeah, so that seems kind of weird. It also does kind of ruin the, like, like we t- you, one of the great things about it is when you get again the reveal. It's like you know what? All of a sudden, like you're like, hey, boobs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I in my opinion, I really love. Um, <laughs> I much more appreciate dick pics after the first time I've already seen your penis. Um, yeah. Just because, yeah, it does. It does kind of ruin that reveal. As much as I want to know what you're working with, so that I can back out of the situation. I also mm. don't want to ruin that moment. It's a very exciting moment to see someone like naked for the first time. I don't really want to ruin that. But if like, you know, after we've already done it and you like trying to, you know, like 
you know, stir up some spicy conversation and send a dick pic, do it. Go ahead. Now, I will say this, though. Would that mean that you're uh, part of your hatred of the uh, gender reveal could be that you're not even going to know the sex in person? So you get that kind of same like, hey, excitement type deal. Can you repeat that? Sorry, you cut out for a second. Do you not want a gender reveal party? Do you just want to find out the gender of the baby when it comes out of you? Yeah, I mean, that is really exciting. Um, but I don't even know if that's even possible anymore. I would really like it that way because I think, yeah, that reveal, that surprise, it's, it's everything in all of life. Surprises are the So best. here's the thing. You're not, you're not, I think what we're getting into is you're not necessarily pro dick pic. It's quality dick pic after you already know that you enjoy the sight of the genitals. Yes. Yeah. It's like a, a nice reminder like, hey, I have a good dick in my life. That sounds like a nice little air supply song. I got a new, got a great dick in my life. Mm, mm. Yep. Aren't I the most talented person on the internet radio? Yep. It's in my contract to agree to those things. <laughs> yep. There you go. A um, couple more stories. Um, let's just go to the big one. Big finish. Do it. Do it. Finally, the U.S. government, and the U.S. government did do this, and you have it in front of you, Alex, so I'd like you to read them off for the people. Okay. Interviewed, like, I think, like, 7 million people or something ridiculous to find out what everyone's favorite sandwich is. So what they did is they say, hey, do you like this sandwich? And they found out that the number one sandwich that people like the most or the most people like. In America. In America. Grilled cheese sandwiches. Yep. I mean, that's super American, you know. It's just that it's just the way that America is. But first off, you'd figure we'd want something with meat in it. Mm. And also, doesn't that just mean that we're just some simple ass white, uh, just some simple ass, just trashy people? Maybe. I mean, that is like, a, that is definitely not a highfalutin sandwich. I think you're looking at it the right, the wrong way, Mike. I think you're, you know, we are, we enjoy the simple things, just cheese and a, and a piece of bread. And, you know, that's, we just enjoy the simple things in life. Okay, then I want – give me uh, – when was the last time you made a grilled cheese? Actually, um, last week or the week before. Right. So in your mind, key to making a good drill, grilled cheese, what type of bread are you using? Ooh, I just used this uh, like rosemary and garlic bread the last time I made one. Um, ugh, tons of butter. And then uh, I really – I just use any cheese that's in my fridge. It's usually some type of like mild cheddar cheese or something like that. That goes Do you use multiple things. different types of cheese? Sometimes, yeah. If I have them in my fridge, absolutely. So you th you almost make it into like a crock pot type thing to where whatever's in the fridge is going in that grilled cheese. Yes, yeah. Sometimes I put like jalapenos on it, uh, which I love. Um, but I think the bread, the bread, and you got to have butter. Those are the two most important parts. I think the cheese kind of... You can, can't go completely wrong with the cheese, but if you have some good bread, oh, my God, it makes it so much better. Here's the thing about the grilled cheeses. I like grilled cheeses, but I love grilled cheese with ham in it with some tomato soup. That Nope, that's gross. No, that's awesome. I don't like that's ham. That's big time. You don't like ham? No. How do you not like ham? Ham is like one of the most go-to, any sort of pork products in terms of like ham. Bacon might be a little too much. Now I might, I like literally might be walking around aroused all night if I get like a grilled cheese sandwich with bacon. But you get grilled cheese sandwich with ham and then a nice bowl of like hot tomato soup to dip the grilled cheese in. That's some quality eating. Yeah, I'd much prefer bacon. I don't like ham. I like ham twice a year and that's on Christmas and Easter. And when you make a grilled cheese sandwich? No. Okay. Go down then the listing of the other uh, sandwiches and the percentages that people like them so that the people at home know where their favorite sandwich landed, Alex. Okay, let me get closer to my computer screen because I can't see shit. Um, uh, again, 70, elderly I, woman over here. These uh, percentages don't make a ton of sense to me, but 75% say grilled chicken, 
75 grilled percent. chicken sandwich is 75 percent they asked him they go hey do you like a grilled chicken sandwich and they went yes and they didn't check so 75 percent of like the 800 million people that they said hey what's your favorite sandwich said yeah i like a grilled chicken sandwich okay uh 75 percent like turkey 71 percent roast beef 69 percent ham 69 All right. Not well, let me ask you a question. Are you are you with them so far? Are you grilled chicken sandwich, then the turkey, then the roast beef, and then the ham? I think ham ham sandwiches are shit. I don't like ham sandwiches. I like ham with the grilled cheese. I like that. Those are literally my uh, least favorite sandwiches. You don't like roast beefs? I, I will eat roast beef like two times a year from Arby's when I'm hungover. Okay. And then turkey sandwiches? No. Not even the day after Thanksgiving? Nope. Ew. No. I don't like Thanksgiving. Okay. And grilled Keep chicken. With- grilled chicken, I really never eat it because I'm afraid. Um, I don't know. Grilled chicken is one of those things. Like I need to see my chicken. I need to see what I'm eating, if that makes sense. What do you mean you're afraid? You're afraid of like salmonella and all that stuff? I'm afraid, you know, I don't know. Sometimes there's like weird things in chicken, like weird little bits, you know? I don't want those bits to surprise me like, or like some kind of fat or something. I don't want that. I like to see my meat. I hear you. Now, that, going back to the dick pics, but um, <laughs> keep going with the list. Okay. Next one, one of my favorites. 69% say BLT. One of my favorites. Love bacon. It's just a good old, like, breakfast sandwich even. Um, 68, club. 67, bacon. Just just bacon. Why is bacon not as popular on this list than I thought they were? I think there's certain people who are just – I think the one thing about BLTs is because of the fact that you got to have a ton of bacon on there. So sometimes people feel that it's not a sandwich-style meat. It's more of – it can't be the main course. It's got to be on burgers or something like that. And then club sandwiches. I think club sandwiches, you get a nice club sandwich, uh, especially at a restaurant where they give you like almost like four – like almost like four stacks of club sandwiches. That's good eating. I would that over um like a, just a regular old turkey sandwich or a grilled chicken sandwich also don't like club sandwiches i'm not a big uh like lunch meat person so no um bacon sandwiches i think they just didn't specify enough there uh you don't just have a, a two pieces of bread with bacon in between no one eats that i mean i would eat that but that's a weird one to put on the list um 66 peanut butter and jelly uh, 65%, another one of my favorites, pulled pork. Um, what is your opinion on the, on the peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I didn't have my first peanut butter and jelly sandwich until I was 18. Yeah, uh, when your, your sister was a, a, was a peanut allergy, correct? Yes, she has a peanut allergy, so we didn't have peanut butter in the house to, for most of my life. Um, and we would just have jelly sandwiches. I will say a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, um, even to this day, that's some quality eaten. My only issue with it is I don't understand how every time I eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, everything around me gets sticky. Oh, I just, it's too sweet for me. I, it's too much sugar. Yeah. I don't know. I have it for dessert maybe, but yeah. All right. So pulled pork, uh, next on the list is tuna. Also love tuna sandwiches. Next, tuna is bomb. Next is, tuna egg, is the bomb. egg salad. Uh, That's horrible. Fifty six percent say meatball, which I think meatball should be higher on the list. Meatball sandwiches are pretty fucking good. Yeah, meatball hoagies are the tits. Those are some big time eating. Yeah, you, you the get a good tits. quality meatball hoagie with some with some uh, provolone cheese and a little bit of uh, parmesan. That's 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 amazing. Yep. That's a that's heaven. And then the last two are a Reuben and French dip, which, to be honest, I've never had a French dip sandwich. Um, I did have a Reuben for the first time maybe a couple years ago. I didn't think I would like it because I don't. It's corned beef, right? Um, yeah. I, I was just in my mind against corned beef for no reason. Uh, so eventually I tried one, and I actually really like it. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
a good Reuben is, yeah, that that's 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 one of those high end sandwiches. You could have a Reuben in like a nice restaurant in like uh, you know in L.A. or New York, and no one thinks you're an A one scumbag. Whereas if you just order like a grilled cheese, people are kind of like, yeah, hey, what's this guy doing? He's you know he freaking gonna park our car later. But if you have a nice Reuben. Then people are like, okay, this guy's got a little class to him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would say my uh, number one on this list for me would be pulled pork. I fucking love pulled pork sandwiches. Put some good old coleslaw on it. Got to have some delicious barbecue sauce. Oh, I love pulled pork sandwiches so much. That used to be like all I ate for a very long amount of my life. Here's my only – I like pulled pork sandwiches. My problem is the falling out of the meat and everything like that, and uh, it just gets messy. Love it. Why are Sloppy Joes not on this list? Probably like – I think uh, Sloppy Joes – Sloppy Joe Day at the uh, O'Hara Elementary Cafeteria was always a good day. Yeah, that was a I good mean, quality meal. Sloppy Joes are like – it's a pastime, you know? It's a very nostalgic thing. Just as messy as, you know, like pulled pork sandwiches, you know? But that mess is like, you know what, for this – small amounts of time i'm okay with being this messy because it makes me feel like a kid again and enjoying sloppy joe day you know i will say the one sandwich that i am incensed was not higher is meatball hoagie i will go back to that and say the, the fact that almost 50 percent of the people said they don't like a meatball hoagie i think that's anti-italian bias personally i really do uh, italian hoagies the yeah like seriously one of my favorite things in the world um yeah i mean even from like subway Gotta love, you know, a meatball hoagie from Subway. Delish. One thing out here in L.A., which is kind of cool, is there's like a bunch of 24-hour Subways around here. Yeah, I think we have maybe one or two in Pittsburgh. Where's um, the closest one to the general city? I want to say that the one in the, I could be wrong, the one in the north side is 24 hours. But like I said, I could be wrong. Maybe that one has know. a drive through Maybe that's it. Maybe you were just going, I don't know, that's a, that, that. going into a, 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 a subway on the north side at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, fun experience. Yeah, that's, that's, that's living. That proves you really like sandwiches. Hell yeah. There I think go. they should, they should uh, redo this study uh, and give people more options. And also maybe, how many people did they interview for this? How many people did they ask? Uh, 64 million people. That's it? I mean, I think they should really ex expand their horizons there because I think they maybe missed a whole part of the country that really likes meatball hoagies, um, you know? Here's my thing. 2020, you're supposed to have a census. Nobody cares. Who cares? Have this be the census. Yeah, I, I agree completely. I think that people in the future would really like to know what sandwiches were most popular this year? Here's how you get people to take the census, because that's a big problem is they're going to hire a bunch of people to walk around and count people. Here's how you do it. You don't count people and say, hey, are you a person? You sit there and say, hey, what are your opinion on your favorite sandwiches? Now they'll answer any question you want to know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree. I'm also looking at this study again, and it says – the percentage is based on people who really like or somewhat like the following sandwiches, which I think is a terrible way to do it. You know, I somewhat like most of these sandwiches, but I don't really like them. You know, I would say I'd eat every one of the sandwiches on the list. There's not like a no on any of that. Sandwiches are really aw – they're, they're amazing. I and love sandwiches I feel in like, general. I feel like the turkey and roast beef and ham ones are higher up on the list just because people eat them. They're easy like lunch things, you know? So people eat them a lot, but they not don't necessarily really love them. Like if they had a choice between the two, I feel like maybe you'd pick something else. That also that brings up now why the hell did meatball hoagies then get that far on the list that enough people didn't go, yeah, I don't mind a meatball. Who dislikes meatball hoagies? I don't know. I have no idea. That's terrible people. This is what's wrong with our country. It's the same people who are like, uh, no, I don't really like the 1960s. Like, I, it's not very nostalgic to me and that music is shit, you know? By the way, Same how about that soundtrack in that movie? Oh, God. Yeah, we listened to it at work the other day. I was, uh, yeah, very good. I wanna, uh, We're going to start humming those tunes right now. Again, thank you very much, Alex, for another week of unbelievable loveliness. 
otherwise known as the Mike Sasson Show. Thank you, Mike. Anyways, anyways, you're all here. We appreciate everybody who listens to the show. Tell a friend. Make sure you like the Mike Sasson Show's Facebook page. Uh, and also keep on a lookout for Alex. Make sure you say hi to her. She likes to always talk to you. Um, at the end of the month, I'll be back at Flappers here in Los Angeles uh, <laughs> Sunday, uh, August 25th, even though uh, Alex does not believe that's an actual place. <laughs> yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's just I, I just sit in a dumpster in Burbank and tell jokes to rats. Yeah. Anyways, it's the Mike Sassage Show. Thank you very much to everyone. Keep listening for Grow Dad Business with Aaron Kleiber coming up next. My name's Mike Sasson. That's Alex Clemens. We'll see you next week. Bye.